Okay, so what is Node.js? I'm not gonna leave you with a, like a textbook definition, right? I want you to leave this tutorial with an actual understanding of the concept so that you actually get what Node.js is about. Let's look at the definition on nodejs.arg, which tells you what Node.js is about, right? It says, Node.js is a JavaScript runtime built on Chrome's V8 JavaScript engine. Let's parse this thing, specifically the first part, where it says Node.js is a JavaScript runtime. That's actually what Node.js is, right? It's a JavaScript runtime. But in order to understand what a JavaScript runtime is, we need to really understand the difference between language and runtime. What's the difference between a language and a runtime? So think about the origins of JavaScript. So why was JavaScript created? It was created to solve a specific problem. And that problem is to achieve some dynamic functionality in the browser. Before JavaScript, the browser, the web browser, was something that showed static documents, right? HTML and CSS are essentially static. You load a page, you get a certain view, you load that page a hundred times, you get that very same view. It's not dynamic, it's not interactive. So JavaScript was created to address that need in order to build interactivity in the browser, all right? So I have a browser loading a web page now, what you want it to do with JavaScript is to throw in a file which contains some code or maybe have it be code in the web page itself, right? So throw the JavaScript in and the JavaScript is gonna wire in the dynamic behavior on the web page. So you can add things like handlers, you can add things like dynamic movement of things in the DOM and all those things. So that's the dynamic portion that JavaScript brings in to your web application right, or to your web page to kind of make it a web application. So this dynamic functionality is enabled by JavaScript. This is where JavaScript was created. So what did the creators of JavaScript have to do? Well, they first had to design the language, right? There was no JavaScript. They had to create that language, which includes figuring out what the syntax is. Once they designed the language and they just said, okay, this is how you build applications using this language, then they had to build something which actually executes it, right? It's not enough to write a language, to design a language and just leave it be. You need something that runs it, right? So they had to build that part as well. So when they created JavaScript, they had to design the language and then they also had to enable the browser to be able to take that language, right? Some file with that code written in that language and be able to execute it and actually cause it to run, to do the things that it's supposed to do. All right, so these are the two things that they had to do. So the first part, which is designing the language, is basically designing the syntax. So for example, if you have like this assignment operator var a equals b plus c, there is a certain thing that needs to happen when this is encountered. So this is the syntax. Anybody who understands JavaScript syntax can look at this and go, yes, this is exactly what this is gonna do, right? So that's the syntax, but then, just the syntax is not enough, like I said. We have to have something which executes it, all right? So this is where they created this JavaScript engine, right? So JavaScript engine is something that takes like a, a .js file, some file which contains JavaScript syntax, and then it executes it, it kind of brings it to life. It runs the commands in that file, right? This is a JavaScript engine. So what the creators of JavaScript did was build this JavaScript engine into the browser. So when the browser encounters the JavaScript file, it passes that JavaScript file to the JavaScript engine and say, hey, JavaScript engine, execute this. And then the engine runs that JS file, right? So this is the difference between the syntax, which is the contents of that JavaScript file, and the engine or the runtime, which is what takes the contents of the JavaScript file, takes the code, and then executes it. This runtime cannot really run in isolation. It needs some kind of a context. Okay, so you can have a runtime which just does assignment operators and sum and all that stuff, but that's not exciting. What they wanted to do was to have that runtime execute in the browser's context, right? A developer who's writing JavaScript code for the browser needs to do something with 
the page that's loaded on the browser, right? They need to maybe add a DOM element or remove a DOM element, add some interactivity, all that stuff. They need to work on the page that is rendered. So when somebody is writing JavaScript in the browser, they need access to that context, to the page where it's running, right? So that context is the DOM in the case of a web browser, right? The document object model, which is what represents the page. It's a bunch of objects which represents the page. So once you have access to the DOM, you can manipulate it, and thus you can manipulate the page as a result, all right? So imagine something like this. In the browser context, you have a JavaScript engine which is sitting in the browser context which contains access to the DOM, and then when you pass in a JavaScript file to the JavaScript engine, your JavaScript code has access to the context. It has access to the DOM, it has access to the window object, all those things. So you can actually manipulate the window, you can manipulate the web page that you're loading. Now, different browsers have different ways in which this is implemented, right? Different browsers obviously have different JavaScript engines. You say one browser is slower than the other, well, it's probably because that browser's JavaScript engine isn't optimized, isn't fast enough, and this other browser's JavaScript engine is probably optimized. So that's implementation which differs from browser to browser. However, we're gonna take a specific browser and a specific engine for our discussion. We're gonna pick the Chrome browser. Chrome is a very popular browser, as you might know, and the engine, the JavaScript engine inside the Chrome browser, that's called the V8 engine, right? That's the name of the JavaScript engine, which kind of powers all the JavaScript execution, okay? So you can imagine when you load a page in Chrome, and it loads the page, you know, they have creates the DOM elements and all that stuff, and it encounters a JavaScript file. The JavaScript file is executed by the V8 engine, which is sitting inside Chrome, but then the Chrome browser is giving it the context. It's giving it the window, it's giving it the document object, so you can, in your JavaScript file, you can access the window object, you can access the document object, and then manipulate it, okay? So this is the setting in which your JavaScript file would execute in the Chrome browser, all right? So it's basically delegating the execution to this core V8 engine, which is what executes the JavaScript, but then it provides the context of the browser and the window. Now, in this particular scenario, the context is kind of fixed. V8 is always running inside the Chrome browser, and it has access to only one context. What's the context? It's the page that's loaded because the Chrome browser can load only web pages. So V8 is operating under only one context, which is the DOM context. So this is where people started thinking, okay, now what if we take that V8 engine out of the browser and use it somewhere else, okay? Because using only the DOM context is a little bit limiting. With the engine running inside the DOM context in a browser, you have access to the page that's loaded, but can you access, say, the file system from the V8 engine? No, you cannot, because the browser restricts you from doing that. So some smart people thought, well, why don't we take that V8 engine out of the Chrome browser and have it run on like an operating system just like other programming platforms, like you run C or Java or whatever else code, which has access to the operating system APIs, why don't we give that the context for the V8 engine rather than this fixed DOM context, all right? So if you were to take that out and uh, put it in this different context, we're gonna call this the Node.js context, and have the Node.js context provided access to the file system provided access to the network APIs, provide access to all the other processes and all those things, right? Core operating system context and not restrict it only to the DOM context. If you were to provide this different context to that same V8 engine, now guess what? You can write JavaScript code, but you can do all those things that you can do with other languages like C or Java, right? All that matters is the context here. If you are taking the engine out of the browser's limited context and giving it all these APIs, giving it availability to all these different powerful APIs, well, you can do all the stuff that you can do in any other language, but you can write JavaScript, right? So this is what Node.js is. Node.js is this runtime 
which is actually leveraging this V8 engine that's available in Chrome, but then it provides this richer context. It provides access to a whole lot of APIs, including core file system APIs, process APIs, and all those things that you would typically expect in a normal programming environment. And now if you give your JavaScript file to this, guess what? Now you can write your JavaScript code to access those different APIs, right? That rich context that Node.js provides the V8 engine. And then the V8 engine is gonna happily run your JavaScript code and say, yeah, you want me to access the file system? I can now do that. I am not shackled by the limitations of uh, when I was living in the Chrome browser and I have access to all those different APIs. So it's gonna happily execute your code and you as a developer has access to all those different APIs in your JavaScript code, right? So this, ladies and gentlemen, is what Node.js is. Now, what's the context here? There is a bunch of things that you can access. Like I mentioned, you can have access to the system resources. So things like memory, file system, input, output, network, and a whole lot more, right? So this is possible using Node.js. Now with this understanding, let's look at the definition again. Node.js is a JavaScript runtime built on Chrome's V8 JavaScript engine. Node.js is this wrapper JavaScript runtime, which leverages Chrome's V8, but provides richer context and richer APIs so that you can achieve a lot more writing in JavaScript. So now that you have this understanding of Node.js, let's actually install it on our machines and run it so that you know what it feels like. So check out this next tutorial where we do just that.